So someone asked me this question recently. The question is pretty simple. Let's say you've got an Excel workbook with some sheets and you want to have all the names of the sheets appear on like a top level page or something. How would you do that? Uh, it's actually not that hard. So in this case, this workbook has four sheets, portfolio, asset one, asset two, asset three, asset one, asset two, asset three, portfolio. What you would do is this. You'd basically go to name manager and you would create a new item. In this case, I called it sheet list. And I put in this formula. I'll make the formula bigger so those of you at home can actually copy it. Basically, what this is using is an old macro, uh, which uh, Excel 4 macros, which basically predate Visual Basic. So this is going back to like the freaking stone ages of Excel, but they're still built into the software. Uh, and strangely enough, you can still get them to work. What that is, that, that formula is basically going to do is it's going to go to the workbook. It's going to find the name of the sheet and then based on what sheet number it is, it will give you the name. So for example, if I take that bit of code and I dump it into something called sheet list, we will now see that if I refer to sheet list using an index function and I say, okay, there's the array called sheet list, which again is the list of workbook names, which is the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. Or if I'm using a modern version of Excel, if I put in zero as the index value for the sheet list, it'll just auto generate the entire list. And as you can see, um, I put in the index function, I put in the name sheet list, I say I want the zero item, if you will, and it just auto generates asset one, asset two, asset three. Now that works. The question of course is what if someone adds like, you know, asset four, it does not automatically update. To get it to update, we have to hack the formula a little bit and say, don't just do a replace, but you can see at the end, I have this little ampersand T now. What that's basically doing is it's using the now function, which tells you what time it is. And then the T function wrapped around the now function basically then hides the time. The T function is a text function, essentially. What it does is it says, hey, if the value there is a number, don't show it. And the reason I'm doing that is because since the clock is constantly running, that will be constantly recalculating this function. So as you add items, you can see it gets added in sequence. Uh, of course, if you do it by typing in numbers, you would have to you know, type in the numbers or in this case use sheet list two, and then I could copy that down and then you know that would automatically update. So again, step one is go to name manager, create an item called sheet list. Step two, put in either this bit of code or this bit of code with a T function at the end so that it's constantly updating. So the now function is the part that's constantly updating. And then step three, either use that and type in the number sheet you want, or just put in a zero, and then it'll auto-generate just a list of all of the sheets. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, there is a help item uh, that Microsoft has uh, called Working with Excel 4.0 Macros that talks a bit about this. Uh, you could, of course, check that out if you want to just Google working with Excel 4.0 macros. It'll give you some information about that. And um, if this sort of stuff fills you with joy and excitement as it does me, I do a real estate Excel modeling class. Uh, I do a lot of stuff for real estate finance, but this is more just pure Excel. And you can check that out on my website at www.kahrrealestate.com. Uh, thanks again for joining me and hoping that this little bit of code will let you build a nice auto-generating table of contents. Thanks again.